Hi guys, I'm Kim, welcome to my home. Today, we're gonna to be baking bread. From milled whole grain, red, hard white, and hard red is what I'm gonna be using for this recipe. Now, is it gonna be the most beautiful loaves that you've ever seen in your amazing life? No, most likely not. But the point is to be able to make a nutrient dense food for my family that we can enjoy, right? I suppose they're going to rise. I'm not here for perfection. I wanna learn how to do this stuff well. I've only done this recipe maybe a handful of times, but I have been making bread for over 10 years. Is it always beautiful? No, but it is always tasty. I am going to be using this flower book again. Now it's come to my attention that it is sold out across the world apparently because nobody has it, uh, which is awesome for the people that do have a copy, but it stinks for y'all. So for this recipe, it's gonna be a basic yeast and I'm just gonna hold it up here, take a snap. You will see that I have doubled it in the margin. This is her basic yeast bread, and I am just going to do one recipe, which makes two loaves. So I have two of my pans here. I prefer cast iron. You can use whatever pans you have. One thing you should know about using fresh flour or fr fresh berries turned into flour is that it does have a little bit of lag time. Um, that is my experience. Uh, I don't know if everyone's experienced that. Uh, you put it in and then it takes a little time to absorb and you also have to use a little bit more. So if you're not going to use a yeast, I'm sorry, a fresh ground flour book like this one and you want to use Betty Crocker's recipe, like I did that one for years, you just have to play with the measurements a little bit. I notice when I make my pancakes, uh, which I'll do a video on that too also uh, soon, I have to add, I think it calls for four cups of flour. I end up adding like six, six and a half, seven sometimes and, uh, and they taste amazing and I get the consistency that I'm familiar with. And it's all, that's one of the keys too, like get the consistency that you are familiar with. If you've never made bread in your life, uh, you may not know that, but you can watch um, your friends do it or your family members, maybe other videos and try and mimic that consistency. It's all a learning curve. It's all just trial and error. But I'm going ahead and telling you, it's going to, it's going to take a little bit more for a Betty Crocker recipe using this kind of milled flour. Um, let's just, let's just get started. So I, for this recipe, it calls for freshly milled hard wheat. You can mix and match your hard wheats. It's not a big deal. So I'm going to do half and half. So I have it set to my bread setting and we're going to need four to four and a half cups flour. So I'm going to meal, meal. I'm going to meal a little bit more than that just to have extra. So to get a cup of flour, you need two thirds cup of wheat berries. That's a very crucial thing to remember. I don't know. Can you see that? Two thirds cup. It's white on white. It's kind of hard to see. So I want to do equal parts of hard white and hard red. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to do two of each and then play with the rest. That's one. Two. I'm gonna do three because I want to have extra. Three. And then I'm gonna do three of the hard red. Now, also, when you're baking bread, the conditions outside, the air pressure, your altitude, I'm at sea level. Like, if I dig four feet, I'm in water. I'm at sea level. It's humid here, but it's a beautiful day outside. Um, but yesterday was really, yesterday was really rainy and nasty. Those days are not the best to make bread because something in the air just messes your bread up and they don't rise as well. I'm not a scientist. I don't know how it works, but I know it does work. So one. We're just gonna turn it on. Um, and if you have your own wonder mill and you're saying, oh, she's supposed to turn it on before she puts the grain in. Yes, I know that. In another video, I've told you why because it stresses me out and I don't like not having things done and things going on. Okay. All right, let's come over here. Okay, so we're gonna start the process. I have my ingredients out. It calls for oil. And there's different kinds of oils. Uh, you can do avocado oil. She mentioned some other oils in here. Let me get to that page so I can let you know real quick. Um, butter is one of them. Let me just put this page up. 
So I have hot water here, not too hot, and it's a cup and a half is what I'm putting into my mixing bowl. To that, I'm gonna add in my oil, honey, an egg, and some salt. Now here's a tip. So when you put oil in the third cup before your third cup of honey, the honey just slides out. So that is a third cup of oil. Isn't that pretty? And then my third cup of local honey. You see how it just slides out? It's not sticking. You can get that angle. And you see it just releasing from the sides. Much easier than doing honey first. And then we are to add salt. And what you're wanting is for this salt to dissolve in the water so that it doesn't get to your yeast. And then we are going to do an egg, I believe it said. Plus an egg. I'm gonna wait on the egg because uh, I know she puts it here, but from baking for so many years, if you get the egg in there too early, it's going to uh, make a tougher uh, bread or whatever you're working on. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix this up and then I'll add the egg. Ooh, nice, nice, a little too fast. Now it's time to add our flour. Probably won't use all this flour, but I like to have a little extra just in case I decide to add more. Whatever I don't use today, I will put in the freezer and I'll be good for another few days. Uh, this kind of flour, whole grain, milled wheat, doesn't last as long. It does go rancid, so you don't want to put it in the freezer for six months and come back to it. That's not gonna work. Uh, whereas there's been things added to the flour on the shelves at grocery stores that may last two, two years. So. Uh, totally different ball game here, guys. So I'm going to need to add three cups of flour. Let me just mix it up because I want to have both. And you see the bran in there? You see all the good nutrition in there? This is not white. It has not been bleached. Nothing has been taken out of it or added to it. Okay, so we're going to add three cups right now. I just want to read to you what's in the book here. So on step two, it says add three cups of flour and mix just until a thick batter forms. Sprinkle yeast over top and continue mixing. While mixing, gradually add just enough remaining flour, so a half cup at a time, to form a soft dough. Now this is the part that gets me. Like I said, I've only made this recipe a couple times and I've had success. Uh, more than not. I think I've had maybe one, two fails, and the rest have been great. Uh, so if you follow the steps, I mean, she's got it down to a science here. It should be fairly, fairly easy for you to do this recipe. So let's just start with the three cups of flour. Time to add the yeast. Now it said, oh, and I gotta cut it open. My new yeast packet here. <laughs> Christmas scissors. Okay. So I don't know how you store your yeast, but after I'm done, ooh, there's something in there. It's like a piece of the packaging. Hmm. Um, when I'm done using this today, I will put this in a mason jar and I'll put it in my refrigerator because it lasts longer there. I've heard some people put theirs in the freezer. I haven't tried that. Let me know if you have because I might just do that because I have uh, like two more of these that I'd like to keep for longer than the expiration date tells me. I need one tablespoon of instant yeast here. So that is a lot of yeast. One tablespoon. We're going to continue adding a half a, half a cup at a time more of the flour. We're trying to get a soft dough formed here. So that is four cups total. I lost count. So now I'm going to let that go until a ball forms. Now this is the part where I used to mess up a lot because I was like, well, you don't need to mix it that much. 
Uh, you don't really touch dough that much. It rises on its own. No, this is where the gluten is stretched and formed and becomes very stretchy and that's what you want. We're on step three. Knead dough until smooth and elastic. Five to six minutes. Uh, let rise in a warm place until dough will bulk for about an hour. So we have probably about four more minutes to let this rise. Sometimes I go a little bit longer because I'm not seeing the result that I'm looking for, but that comes with practice too. So if you're new, uh, you may fail several times and don't give up. Still eat that bread. Do something with it. Um, it is a learning game. Okay. It was balled up and then it got stuck right there. So I'm going to stop it right there. It was making a nice ball. It's got a nice little stretch too. I don't know if that's the window pane test though. I don't think that's it yet. Because the window pane test, I don't think it's supposed to be sticky sticky. And you're supposed to be able to stretch window pane test. Should we throw it on the window, Riley? No? Okay. I'm gonna let it go just a little bit. Okay, there we go. Look at that. So you see how it's gathering up on itself? I think this is it. This is hard for me right here, um, but I am learning and I'm doing and I'm not giving up. So I hope that you don't either. I think this might be what we're looking for, pretty sure. So we have a stretch and they say to do a window pane test. So I'm going to do that with a little bit. So the, the thing is, it's supposed, you're supposed to be able to stretch it and see through it. This is stretchy. I think that might be it. But let's let's see if it sticks. The window pane test. Ready? It sticks. Say pretty. Good girl. Say pretty. Good boy. Now it's time for, for us to let this rest. Uh, usually it's for about an hour, sometimes it's a little longer, but what I do is wrap my bowl with a cloth. This is just a, a flour sack hand towel that I, I use all the time. Um, because my bowl is already warm, uh, I just want to wrap it like a little blanket. Now I know some people put it in the oven. I haven't tried that, so if you do that, do it. Um, I've actually in the past put mine in the dryer because I had just got done taking out some clothes and it was still nice and warm in there. Um, I haven't done laundry in a few days. But whatever you do, do it. If you know something better, do it. But this is just how I do my. It's been about an hour and 10 minutes and let's see what we got. It's the big reveal. Oh yeah. Isn't that beautiful? And it's still a little warm. It has doubled in size. Um, it's not smooth on top like I see other people's, but you know what? Mine never have been, and I still get a good loaf or two of bread. So I'm very happy with this. Exciting. So I'm just going to let this, I'm going to cover this back up for just a minute, and I'm going to grease my pans real quick. These pans I love. They're cast iron. I got them off of Amazon. Um, I just like cast iron guys because you know you can actually cook it over a fire if you needed to if you're doing some kind of well outdoorsy thing and these are I think they're eight by four which is the suggested size in her book for two loaves of bread so to grease them you can use oil uh, if you have Pam I guess you could use that too I'm gonna use butter so but really I'm just gonna I've wiped these out I'm just going to put some butter in here and take a napkin and wipe the insides. And reserve some of your butter for topping your bread when it's done. It's so good. And the cast iron will soak that in. And this helps to season your cast iron too every time you add oils to it. Might add a little too much. Ready? Oh, 
little too much butter there. I milled some more wheat berries into flour because you need some to dust your countertop, your clean countertop. Step number four says divide dough into two equal portions. Using your hands, shape into loaves and place in prepared pans, which we just did. Let rise in a warm place until doubled in bulk again, 30 to 45 minutes. I'm gonna pour my flour out onto the surface. That is more than enough. Now, in the old Betty Crocker recipe that I used to follow, I think it was just the basic loaf as well, and it told me to punch down the flour, but in this recipe, it does not, so I don't do it. I basically just take my bread, uh, my dough, and I'm just gonna squish it until I have like half. I try to measure it out before I take it out of the bowl. It just makes it easier for me. And then you're just gonna knead it a few times and you wanna shape it. And it looks like a nice loaf. Okay. Now also in Betty Crocker, uh, she tells you to roll it out and then to pinch the ends and then tuck them under. This does not say that, so I'm not going to do that. I'm gonna simply, I'm done with it. I'm going to place it in the pan uh, and I'm gonna butter the top of it. It's a really good consistency, so I'm hoping that I have some great loaves of bread here. Just place it in. All right guys, now time for the fun part. So these have been setting for about 45 minutes and it's such a beautiful day out that I actually took them outside and put them somewhere that my chickens wouldn't get into them, but the hot sun, I mean, it's not like crazy hot out there, but it's warmer than it is inside. So anyway, I took them out there, of course kept them covered and look at how much they rose. I'm so excited. So again, they doubled in size and maybe a little bit more. They're not completely filling up the pans here, but once they rise in the oven and become a beautiful loaf, I feel like they will. So I am pleased. Time to put them in the oven for about 20 minutes, give or take your oven situation. You may uh, wanna keep an eye on them. I'll probably put mine in for about 18 minutes and then watch them from them because my oven does run a little bit hot. So here we go. So pretty. So they didn't rise as much as I was hoping in here. They kind of stayed, stayed the same size that they did on their second rise. But we're gonna butter these up and let them rest for a little bit and then we're gonna slice them open and see what we got. Uh, am I satisfied with the size? No, no I'm not. Uh, I wish it was much bigger, but uh, it could be user error. I know it's not the recipe because people do it online all the time and show their beautiful bulging loaves of bread. Uh, yes, I wish it was better, but I am satisfied that I know it did rise for one. Uh, it smells delicious. It's nutrient dense, full of all the good stuff. So I am pleased with this bread. Um, I have tried in the past, I doubled the recipe and then put that doubled recipe into two loaf pans and it got humongous. So maybe that's just what I need to do. If you got any tips, share them with us down below, please. Let's get to cutting. Oh yeah, it is done inside. I was kind of worried that it wouldn't be done because last time I did this recipe, apparently something was off and I didn't put it in long enough. I, this one was in the oven for about 23 minutes. I started at 18 and put it in for another, what is that, five minutes? Calculations, not my strong suit. They say to wait and not to uh, saw into your bread immediately, which is really hard. Let me tell you, it smells like a bakery up in here. 
Uh, but I did wait this time uh, and it's nice and fluffy inside. When you go ahead and cut your bread, it makes it, this is what it does to it. When you go ahead and cut it, when it's just out of the oven, it goes and it doesn't come back up. Look, it's not coming back up. But when you do wait, it is nice and beautiful, a nice cut. It didn't, sh it didn't get smushed down and stay, right? So it is important to wait about 10, 20 minutes, as long as you can. Uh, I still want to eat it warm, so we waited 20 minutes. But uh, let's have a taste test. You want some? Yep. Yarp. Yarp. Okay. Oh, man, that is beautiful. You can have the first taste. I'll have the ugly piece that I just squished. I actually like the outside because I have poured butter on it and it's so buttery and delicious. Mm-hmm. Mm mm-hmm. I have no words. It's just mm-hmm. Mm. It is so like more deep flavor. Everything made with real wheat, it just has a better flavor. It's more real flavor, more, I don't know, deep. Lack of better words. Really, really good, really, really tasty. I hope that you give this a try uh, and comment down below any tips and tricks you may have. I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys. Yeah, really this is probably the best one, it's really good.